Hi, welcome to today's video. Uh, as you can see, I'm sitting at my rig and I'm kind of focused on the V1 Universal Hub or just the Universal Hub, uh, but it's the first one that uh, Fanatec had, so I call it the V1 as opposed to the V2, which we'll be covering here later on. One of the problems that I have with this hub is reaching the buttons and the pedals when I'm using my NASCAR rim when I'm racing NASCARs. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go through the pro some of the things I like and dislike, um, and then the process of changing it out, uh, plus some extra stuff that uh, you can do to make your experience better with the NASCAR rim on the Universal Hub V2. So stick around. And I've got my view set correctly. Are you kidding me? All right, so before we get into today's video, of course, there's the uh, obligatory, hey, if you like the, the video and anything else on my channel, uh, please hit the subscribe button down below, give it a like and thumbs up, all that good stuff. Hit the notification buttons, yada, yada, yada. Also, I stream on Twitch most Saturday evenings uh, for League Race, um, so please check me out there. Link in the description below. All right, so now about the Fanatec Universal Hub. Um, it's a good unit, right? It's 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 decent. It's plastic, but it seems sturdy. Okay, and for just about any other rim that they Fanatec has, it would probably work great. Unfortunately, when I use it for NASCAR, which is what I have it for, it's very difficult to reach the the paddle shifters for anybody that uses those, especially for the next gen car. Um, not only that, but it's got a lot of nice buttons on it that I can't reach very easily without taking my hand off the wheel. And as you know, this week being Daytona Speed Weeks and everything on iRacing, um, that's not a good thing. You don't want to be taking your hands off the wheel. So, um, so I had to f try to figure out a solution and doing some searches on the internet and looking at some other products. I have one, so I'm going to show you what that solution is today. We're going to go back to the bench right behind me. We're going to put on the Universal Hub V2 uh, plus some 3D printed devices that will help me reach the buttons that are on the V2. All right, so here we are at the bench. Um, I've got the wheel. Uh, so we're going to just we're going to break it all down, uh, take it down the, the rim off of the hub itself, um, the V1 hub. And we're going to install this V2 hub. Now you can already see the paddles are much extended, but I don't really use them for NASCAR racing, or at least with the NASCAR rim. And it's got the quick release on it, whereas this one doesn't. And I've got all the four button pods on it. Okay. Now, one thing too I want to point out, this is the X, uh, Xbox version of the version 2 hub or v2 hub um, either one will work i probably would have preferred the regular version of the hub uh, i'm not i don't do xbox but it works the same so no different really other than this one would work with an xbox uh, console if you use that so first thing we're going to do is take all this stuff apart uh, so i'm going to go through the process uh, i may end up speeding up the video i'm not exactly sure yet but let's uh it's just some, some mighty strong Velcro on the uh, center thing there. And the Universal Hub comes with this handy dandy screwdriver made for the uh, little screws for, that are right here that hold the center, center piece on. So I'm gonna go through and take these all off. Was it the voice? Was it the fire burning in me? All of the noise all right little center cap there we'll end up putting that back on with the other hub and then the wheel itself now you can see how deep how deep that dish is uh, and that's what i just can't get my thumbs to the buttons uh, quickly enough or easy enough whether it's to talk on my crew chief app dre uh, digital race engineer 
Uh, I'll put a link in the description below for that because it's a pretty cool tool. I like that better than uh, crew chief. That's what it looks like. I mean, it's a nice unit. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's probably one of the uh, the least expensive hubs that they have, and it does the job great. It's just too far to reach the buttons with my thumbs with that rim. So we're gonna put this one aside and bring out the V2. Okay. So the problem with this though would be is when this comes normally, it just has like these little these little brackets just like that, right? Connected to all your, your button pods. And it just kind of sticks them out there. So I kind of, you kind of have the same problem, right? You can't reach the buttons well enough. The paddle's a little better because these stick out a little more and whatnot. But for the most part, you still kind of run into the same problem with these button pods uh, and the normal bracket that they come with. So what I found on the interwebs were these. This is a 3D printed uh, plastic bracket that will hold two button pods. And then the best part about this is that it mounts the button pods directly to the rim, to the spokes on the rim. So now the buttons that I need are all right there in easy reach of my thumbs. So um, first thing we're gonna do is mount the button pods to one of these things here. And again, I'll probably speed up the video just to make it faster, but it's just a bunch of screws, uh, tiny screws. I forget the uh, the size, but they're they're really tiny. It's the ones that uh, that go into the screw holes. Let me you can see there are tiny little screw holes on the sides there. Okay. And then the bracket itself has this little nub here to align everything. And then you got two screws and then a third. So each button pod will have three screws in it. Uh, like I said, they're pretty tiny. So I'm going to go ahead and get these on and uh, we'll probably just speed up the video through this part. It's pretty, pretty straightforward as far as mounting. have it right so now we got two of our button pods mounted to this 3d printed uh, bracket and uh, I'm gonna I'll put the link in the description for where I got this, this is on Thingiverse lots of cool stuff there um, and so what we're gonna do is part as part of the print it comes with these little spacers these little washers here right, so I'll show you there okay what they do is they fit right in the outermost hole of the spoke for the wheel. So we end up, just gonna set this there, put that there. Got a metric screw for this. And then just, you just kind of, and there's a, uh, a nut that has to fit fits inside the hole and then it just captures the screw as you're uh, screwing it on. Right, I'll get this all bolted up, but just so you give you, give you an idea here. So now I've got six buttons right up my thumb tip. I'd say fingertips, but you don't use your fingertips for hitting the buttons. All thumbs. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this put back together, uh, or put together, I should say. I have been running it for a while um, and took it all apart for this video, and it works great. 
So, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna get it all back together and then show you what a difference it makes as far as being able to reach the buttons and having access to all these adjustments while I'm racing. So we'll be, uh, I'm gonna speed up the video as I do this and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I've got the button pods on, and it went together pretty smooth, as you saw. Um, just, you know, probably the hardest part is getting all the circles, the holes lined up with the washers on it, the bracket and everything. But once you set the wheel on it, it kind of holds everything in place. So that went pretty well. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around and show you how much easier it is for me to touch the buttons or get to the buttons with my hands still on the wheel. Uh, but I need my gloves first. Got these K1 carding gloves. Uh, not because I'm trying to be cool. I'm just trying to protect the wheel. So, all right, here we go. Okay, so what you can see is as I keep my hands on the wheel, I've got access to probably the most used buttons that I have. And then I've got access really with, with just sliding my hand down the wheel uh, to the other ones, okay? The Xbox button I use for brake bias, uh, things I don't do that often. Um, because yeah, that one I do have to take the hand off the wheel and whatnot, but other than that. Also, it is easier to get to the paddles because they are extended out farther and mainly because this piece here, make sure I'm in camera, this piece here is longer. Whereas the, uh, the, v, the V1 hub was a little bit shorter and kind of stuck straight out, didn't really curve like this one does. But yeah, works a whole lot better. And of course, the last piece of the puzzle. Let's get this thing lined up. Make sure I'm on there correctly and push it on. There we go. All right, back to the rig and uh, let's see how it works in action. All right, so here we are with the uh, new hub on the rim, all my button pods within easy reach. I've got a quick release on here. Highly recommend one of these little babies if you uh, have the means to do so. All right, we'll get it on here, push it on. And yeah, it's just so much better having access to the, my button radio, Dre, um, any other adjustments, ignition and whatnot. And I can do so with just sliding my hands up and down the, the rim and not have to take my hands off to reach in to try to push a button and try to remember and take my eyes off the screen too to find that button. Here, I, muscle memory kicks in and I'm able to just find my button without even looking. Uh, the only one that I have to take my hand off the rim for is the Xbox button down here, the universal bunch of, you know, switch here. And like I said, I use it for brake by, so I'm not really adjusting it that much during a race. So hopefully this helps. I'll put a bunch of links in the description below for the stuff that I use, the screws that were used, the hardware, all that kind of stuff. If you like the, the video again, please give it a thumbs up. It always helps, as you know, the YouTube uh, algorithm there kicks in. Uh, if you like the uh, this video and others uh, on my channel, please consider subscribing. 
And last but not least, I, I mentioned I do stream on Twitch most Saturday nights for League Grace. Uh, if you want to check me out there, ask any questions, and just watch me race on iRacing, uh, check me out there. I'll put a link in the description below for that as well. So that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you all learned something. I hope it helped and uh, maybe help you make a decision on which way to go on some of this uh, Fanatec gear, knowing we've got some, uh, some pretty smart people out there creating little devices that help you make your experience a lot better on iRacing. So until next time, please live well, laugh often, and love always. Take care, all.